Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So, the case that I have for you all today is a pretty short one. It is a very recent and currently ongoing case. This is a case that hits very close to home for me because Chelsea went missing from Arizona and that is where I live and I feel like I need to make this video to spread awareness and get more eyes on this case. I know a bunch of you are also Arizonans so I urge you all to pay very close attention to this case but even if you're not from Arizona, Chelsea could literally be anywhere right now so no matter where you live, Please take the time and listen to this case so that we can keep our eyes peeled for Chelsea and bring her back home to her parents who miss her so, so deeply. Chelsea Grimm is 32 years old and is originally from the Ocean Beach area in San Diego, California. But at the time of her disappearance, she was planning on taking a road trip clear across the country from San Diego to Connecticut to meet her parents, Stephen and Janet, for a wedding of a close friend. This was an event that she likely would not have wanted to miss. Chelsea is licensed as an associate social worker, so that is what she does for work. She loves the outdoors, going camping, and she is very much into art and photography. She is an outgoing, vivacious, talented young woman with a heart of gold, according to her family. At the time of her disappearance, apparently Chelsea was working on a project about the lost and forgotten people of this country, which is just heartbreakingly ironic that she is now missing herself. Chelsea is also known to be a huge animal lover, recently adopting a bearded dragon named Roxy. Chelsea told her parents that she didn't want to fly to Connecticut for the wedding. She wanted to drive because she wanted to bring Roxy with her, so she wouldn't be able to bring her on the plane, so she wanted to drive there instead. She left her home in San Diego on September 24th, 2023 in her white Ford Escape. As she was driving, she was in contact with her parents every day until September 26th when she texted her parents and let them know that she was actually going to be stopping in Arizona to do a camping trip. She had been driving for three days at that point and she said that she probably wasn't going to be making it to the wedding after all. Now, I do want to note that the drive from San Diego to Phoenix, Arizona is only about five hours, so I'm not exactly sure how she was driving for three days at that point and only made it to Arizona. It seems like maybe she was making stops and seeing people along the way, but somehow after driving for three days, she was still in Arizona. Now, at the time when she told her parents she was going to be camping, she already had her tent and her camping gear with her, so it wouldn't be an issue for her to spontaneously camp like this. This was also something that wasn't too far out of character for Chelsea. She was very spontaneous and sometimes just did things like that. Spontaneous camping trips, spontaneous hikes, and things like that. That's just sort of how she lived her life. September 26th is the last time that Stephen and Janet heard from Chelsea, but at first, they weren't too concerned because she warned them that she would likely be out of cell service for a few days and wouldn't be able to send or receive text messages or calls during that time. However, after three days went by and they still hadn't heard from Chelsea, they started to get really worried. So after not hearing from Chelsea in several days at that point, her parents reported her missing by October 4th and police started their investigation. Chelsea was going to fly home for a wedding um, on the, in Connecticut, well, New York. She was flying home to go to this wedding and see us. And the day she was supposed to get on the airplane, she emailed Steve and said that she was going to drive across country instead. And so that was on the 24th of September. Um, I would say it's not at all out of character for her to change plans at the last minute. Um, that was a characteristic of her. Um, she had adopted this um, bearded. dragon lizard. Bearded dragon. Bearded dragon. Uh, she had adopted a bearded dragon and said she didn't want to come without it. And you can't and she couldn't bring it on the plane. So that ostensibly was the reason. The last contact, we, we were texting back and forth with her and she said, I've driven for three days, I'm in Arizona. I'm not gonna make it to the East Coast for the wedding. I think I'm gonna just skip the wedding and stop here for a day or two and do some camping. She had her tent and her sleeping bag with her in the car when she left. And then 
radio silence. And we, she had told us she was going to probably be out of on range for a couple of days. So a couple of days, it wasn't, we weren't alarmed. But then when two or three more days went by, and we usually texted or talked to her daily. So when a couple of days went by and we hadn't heard from her, I, we got really worried. So we called um, it in as a missing persons report on the 4th of October. It turned out that back on September 27th, Chelsea met up with a female friend in Phoenix, Arizona. So this friend did end up seeing Chelsea in person. When meeting up, the two planned to get brunch together the following day on the 28th, but Chelsea ended up canceling last minute. Once again, this was not too far out of character for Chelsea. She would cancel sometimes, she would make plans, not be able to go because she was doing something else. Again, she's a very spontaneous person. There are some reports that Chelsea called her parents on the 27th to let them know that she was coming back to San Diego, saying that she couldn't do this trip by herself, but her parents have not confirmed this. They reported that their last conversation with Chelsea was on the 26th via text, so maybe a witness heard her on the phone and thought it was her parents. We don't really know. But later that same day, on September 28th, reports came in that Chelsea was trying to book a motel room in Seligman, a town near Williams, Arizona. I totally could be saying that name wrong. I have never heard of Seligman in Arizona. Never been there, never heard of it but that is where she was trying to book a hotel room. According to witnesses, she appeared disoriented and confused at that time. Apparently, she was trying to use euros to pay for the room rather than US dollar. As of right now, we don't know why she was trying to use euros. I don't know the last time she went to Europe or if she had met someone who gave her this money. We don't even know where those euros came from. It isn't reported whether or not she was actually able to book a hotel room, but it doesn't look like she was able to because there was no reports that she was able to come up with the US dollar and there were no reports that she actually stayed at that hotel. On the evening of September 28th, someone called 911 to report suspicious activity in a cemetery in Williams, Arizona. So, police showed up to the cemetery to investigate. That is when police made contact with Chelsea, which was recorded on an officer's body cam. On the footage, you can see Chelsea at the cemetery, telling the officer that she was doing a photo shoot there, but she got emotional, so she ended up staying longer than expected. The officer asked her if she smoked any marijuana, and she said that she had smoked a few hours prior. She said that she didn't plan on staying at the cemetery after sundown, but being there made her emotional over the fallen soldiers, so she stayed longer. The officer asked her if she had anywhere to go, and she said that she didn't want to drive while crying, so she asked if she could hang out for another 15 or 20 minutes. She said that she planned on camping out somewhere in her car, but wasn't exactly sure where to go. The patrol officer at the time did not think that Chelsea seemed disoriented or under the influence, so he didn't think there was any reason to detain her or stop her from driving. He advised her of a truck stop nearby where she could pull up to the gas station area and sleep and nobody would bother her. She agreed and she said that she would probably end up doing that. The officer did warn her that her registration was about to expire and told her to change it, but that was it. They said that she could stay there at the cemetery as long as she needed and that nobody should bother her before she left. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I just was doing a photo shoot of the lost soldiers and got a little emotional, so I'm I was so... crying before okay. I got back on the road. Yeah, okay. I'm just making sure someone called it in, so... I'm, I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're quite all right. I mean... This... I was just doing a photo shoot, yeah. Um, packed up. I'm going to leave soon. Okay. But I just didn't want to drive like that. Sad. I got gotcha. you. You've been smoking a little bit of marijuana? Um, earlier today, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... Cool. Do you have your license on it by any chance? Yeah. It gets me all emotional, too. Yeah, it's just, you know, um, I'm trying to do a series on the lost and the forgotten people in this country. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, how long ago did you uh, smoke marijuana? Oh, hours and hours ago. Okay, right on. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, just hang tight for me really fast, and I'll be right back, okay? Okay. That won't be much of a bother.
Sorry, go ahead. So, if just warn her, just say, hey, I don't see signs of impairment, but you're also not driving. Mm -hmm. So, I encourage you to maybe call someone else to drive, especially because you're in a fragile state. And say, but if you are driving and I do see impaired behavior, you have said to me that you smoke marijuana. I don't want to get into that, so I would encourage you to find someone else who could come drive for you. Or just walk and give her a PA ride to her hotel or whatever, if this car is safe in place, you know. Yeah, okay, it is. But you, there's nothing we can do to force her to do anything at this point. Okay. Like, so. I got you. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Bye. All right, uh, I just wanted to let you know um, your registration is expired. Oh, is it really? Yeah, September of 23. So it, oh, it just it was September 9th, so no oh, big deal. Okay. I just wanted to let you know, bring it to your attention. Okay. Uh, here's your driver's license Thank back. Thank you. Um, I know you told me that you, you smoked marijuana and you're kind of, well, obviously I would be in an emotional state as well. I don't know if you want somebody else to drive you or if you just want oh. to hang out here for a little bit longer. You're more than welcome to do that. Yeah, if it's okay with you to, yeah. if I hang out here for another like 15 or 20 and then head on the road, that would be my plan, sure. I think. Yeah, I don't see any signs of impairment or anything like that, so. Yeah, no, I, that's, I just, I mean, with my, with my eyesight and then crying, it's not the best combination at night. Yeah, I, I, totally <laughs> I was understand. like, I'm just going to like cry on the road or I'm just going to sit here and cry so I, I got have you. my dragon and I'm just gonna... Oh, that's freaking cool. I didn't even notice that. Thanks, Rosie. Wow, Rosie. I that's... think she's asleep. Wow, right on. She got bored. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a hotel around here or anything? I don't. I was actually thinking of just camping for the night, but I wasn't really sure exactly yet. Gotcha. Well, I didn't you... plan to be here until sunset. Okay. You can't camp in the city limits. It's kind of like a city statute we have. Okay, good But job. you can always go, I don't know if you can see like the, the yellow lights over there, the loves. It's a trucker stop in, okay. in the gas station area. You can just sleep there. Nobody, oh, will, nobody will bother you. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Yes. Might get some good shots at sunrise, too, there. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. sunrise here, too. Uh, if you ever want to take photo shoots of, like, the statues in the morning, dude, it's, it's really cool because the sun, like, rises right behind them. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll probably stay at the truck stop then, save some money, and then Boom. come over for the sunrise. You got it. Cool. All right. Well, well you, you have a great time. I'm Blake. Thanks, Blake. You got it. Appreciate your compassion. You got it. Um, so, yeah, just, just hang out here however long you want, um, and you're good to go. Awesome. And then take care of registration, obviously, because it's Yeah, it's a I can do that online, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Perfect. Hi, honey. If, like, a county stops you, they're, they're not going to be as nice as me. They're kind of dicks. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Have a great rest of your day. Now, according to Stephen, Chelsea's father, her grandfather was a World War II veteran, so that could be why she was up in her feels, but we can't be completely sure. We don't know why she felt so emotional after being at the cemetery for that photo shoot. Well, she was very into photography, so, and she was, had been doing, she had done some articles and some photography in San Diego as part of the way she was supporting herself, and so it, to hear that she was doing a story on lost veterans was not is not unusual. Um, I don't know the circumstances under which she was taking pictures in a graveyard at night, so I I really don't make anything of it because I would, it would be pure speculation. I also want to note that Chelsea's parents said that it wasn't super out of character for her to be in the cemetery taking photos because again, she was an artist and a photographer. The full body cam footage of this interaction is about nine minutes long and the only place I could find the full footage was the LTL True Crime Podcast. So shout out to you. I have no idea how you got this full footage, but thank you for posting it. By September 30th, there was a local woodcutter who came forward to police and said that he spotted Chelsea's car on the side of a dirt road. She looked to be camping in her car. So the man stopped to talk to her and according to him, she appeared okay. The man asked her if she needed help and she said no, she was just fine. Then he saw her out of the car and taking photographs of the area. At the time, the man said nothing seemed out of the ordinary with her. That was the last known contact with Chelsea. 
Since then, nobody has seen or heard from her. By October 4th, again, we know that Stephen and Janet reported Chelsea missing. Then, by October 5th, local hunters in the area actually spotted Chelsea's white Ford escape in an isolated area on Forest Road 6 in the K-Bob National Forest. The car had two flat tires. I believe the front two tires were flat based on the pictures that I've seen of the car, but I could have that off. We know that two tires were flat, but we don't know exactly which ones that was not reported on. When they found the car, they found that it was locked. Then they also found that there were some items in the car, such as her camera. However, her wallet, phone, sleeping bag, and her bearded dragon were not in the car. Chelsea appears to have taken those items with her. The car was neat. There didn't look to be any sign of a struggle, so it's possible that she did willingly leave her car and continued camping. After finding her car, police and volunteers conducted a three square mile radius search around where her car was found, but they didn't find anything. Her parents have said that based on the fact that she took her pet and other items with her, and the fact that if she had died camping, her body would have been found, those are all very good signs as of right now. They are wondering if she got a ride out of the area or something like that. However, I do want to note at this time that there has been no further phone or bank activity from Chelsea since September 30th. So it's been about a month since she's used her phone or bank account. Those are things that you probably would be using if you were out camping. Even if you didn't have much service, at some point you'd have to go somewhere and get money to eat or to buy supplies. You're probably most likely not going to be able to last an entire month out in the elements without anything, without contacting anybody, without buying anything. So to me, the fact that no activity has been found on her phone or her bank account is very concerning. Now, at the time, after last hearing from Chelsea, her father did say that she seemed a little bit disjointed when they last heard from her. It turned out that she was very upset with a man that she had previously been dating. Apparently, she was scared of him, and her parents felt that it was possible that she was running away from him. If not, they think that whatever he did or whatever he said is affecting her overall mindset. After Chelsea's disappearance, Chelsea's sister, Sarah, also revealed that Chelsea's ex-boyfriend was claiming to be her fiancé and had even set up a phony GoFundMe account trying to make money off of people searching for her. However, according to police, he has been ruled out as a suspect at this time. I believe he did have an alibi. However, that doesn't mean that him being someone Chelsea is scared of couldn't have affected her mindset and caused her to act out of character or to want to leave her life behind if she truly is scared. So, at this point, Chelsea is still missing and the leads are dying down. Her family has hired a private investigator saying that the Coconino police are actually working with the PI very well. They said that them hiring a PI was not an indicator that police are doing a bad job because they believe that they are doing everything they can. The PI is just there to help where it is needed and continue working to see if they can find new leads that police may have missed. It's never a bad thing to have more eyes on the case. The police said that they have already spent over 500 hours investigating and they are continuing to do so, but again, they just have not found anything useful. They had uh, mentioned on, on a call we had with them Friday that they had 500 man hours in the field looking for her. Um, they've been very scientific, technology being used with mapping, etc. So I feel like we've got real professionals who are truly trying uh, the very best to find her, and we're grateful for that. And yet, th there are not that many new clues. So, understandably, it goes to a slightly different level of immediacy for them. And it just seemed to us like it couldn't hurt to uh, hire Kelly Townsend, who we hired. Um, he specializes in missing persons. So, um, Maybe there's something he can do to supplement them. We're not experts in this field. We're totally inexperienced. Presumably the sheriff's office has a lot of other things going on simultaneously. And I think after two weeks of extensive searching for Chelsea, they're sort of waiting for more public information, waiting for more 
clues because they followed up everything that they really had to look into. And I think that they've done a thorough job doing that. Chelsea's parents have not stopped holding out hope that Chelsea is still out there. Police have said that as of right now, they are not suspecting foul play. They are holding out hope that she just walked off and is out there camping somewhere and is either not wanting to contact anybody or maybe she's unable to for whatever reason. Maybe she did get lost. Maybe she got those flat tires and walked off looking for somebody to help and then got lost that way. Maybe she met someone along the way and decided to camp with them and something happened to her with them. Maybe she got those flat tires, someone offered her a ride, and she left the area with that person, whether they had good intentions or not. Obviously, we still need to hold out hope that she is okay, but we also have to consider the real possibility that she could be out there lost and injured somewhere, or that she could have encountered someone with malicious intent or that she's maybe struggling with some sort of mental illness that is making her believe that she cannot come home. We truly don't know. All we can do is continue looking for Chelsea and continue sharing her story. For this case, I'm not going to go over the possible theories because I don't think it's helpful to sit here and try to go through every single scenario, but I do want to ponder what could have possibly happened just generally. Again, she could be out there lost somewhere. She could be injured somewhere. She could have encountered foul play. She could have some sort of mental illness that's keeping her away. Or she could be out there camping, just not wanting to contact anybody in her life and has somehow been able to survive this far without using her bank. I will say maybe she had some cash with her that nobody else knew about and she just is using that. Maybe she's living off the land and is scouring for her food and is drinking out of lakes and things like that. That's totally possible as well. So I want us to keep all of these possibilities in mind when pondering what could have possibly happened to Chelsea and know that no matter which of these situations could be going on, we still need to be looking for her and we still need to try to bring her home to her family. Chelsea Grimm is described as being 32 years old, standing at 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing 130 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. She also has a very distinctive tattoo on her left arm in her wrist area, which can be seen on body cam footage. It is a vine with leaves on it. She got it when she was 16 or 17 and she had designed it herself, but it's definitely a unique tattoo, so make sure to keep on the lookout for that. She is also known to bring her bearded dragon with her everywhere, and chances are you will see her riding on Chelsea's shoulder. If you have any information regarding Chelsea's whereabouts, please contact the Coconino County Sheriff's Office at 928-774-4523. So that is all I have for today's video. If there is any video that you choose to share, please let it be this one or you could just share her picture or an article that I have listed down below. Anything helps. If you are in Arizona or any of the surrounding states, please keep your eyes absolutely peeled. I truly believe that the more people hear her story and see her face, the better chance we have at finding Chelsea. I am very hopeful that this case will be solved, but we can increase those chances the more we talk about this case. But that is all the information that I have on this case, and now I want to know what you all think is going on. What do you think happened to Chelsea? Where do you think she is? Why do you think this happened? And do you think she will be found? Let's discuss any and all thoughts that you have in the comments below. I do want to note that not a lot of people have covered this case, so there is a good chance that Chelsea's family may see this video. So I ask that each and every one of you, please be kind and consider it in the comments. No negative or hateful comments. We are here to find Chelsea and support her family nothing else. But that is where I am going to end today's video. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share this video with anybody you know. Make sure you turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy and I hope to see you next time. Bye.